Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Rocks Talks, only on Rocks Network. Today we're talking to Richard Brindley, who is from the new wave of classic rock, and one of the organisers for Webfest 3, the third in the series, and there may be more, um, of the online gigs of some very exciting bands, some very big bands as well, and this one will be on the 15th and 16th of August. If you intend watching it, then do please donate, and the money goes to actually paying the bands for their time and their, their music, unlike a lot of online stream festivals at the moment that don't pay them anything at all. The money also goes to help venues that are currently struggling under lockdown and COVID. We talked to Richard about the effect of COVID and... Um, what the organisation aims to do and always loves to do, which is promote rock, real rock, not plastic rock. Um, so anyway, you hear it from Richard, Richard's own voice, and here we go. We're, we're Webfest 3 is almost upon us, Richard. Um, it's going to go know. out on the August 15th and 16th, and uh, judging from what I've seen, Quite a lineup you've got there. Absolutely. Um, it's kind of one of those things that we're starting back in April um, and it was seeing what was going on with, not, with people not being able to do gigs and, and that kind of thing. And then there were a few of, the, of these lockdown acoustic um, sessions. Mm. And what we wanted was something a bit more like a festival, um, you know, not to denigrate what people had done up at that point. But what we wanted to try and do is capture more of the live experience and, and, and broadcast out there previously recorded live material and specially recorded stuff that people were doing, you know, to the best of their capabilities in lockdown. Um, and it's just kind of gone from there really. But, you know, the, the first one was kind of small scale. We had uh, the guys from Dead Man's Whiskey on it who were a good mates of ours um, headlining it. Um, and it was just one of those things that I had no idea if when I asked people they were going to say yes. Um, and we had three weeks to bootstrap the whole thing. So that was asking all the bands getting all the videos, compiling it all, uh, doing all the links and everything. So it was, it was quite a rush. Um, and based on the success of that one, it was kind of, well, look, that was really good. So let's just immediately announce the next one and see what happens kind of thing. Um, and uh, we were very, very privileged to be able to get massive wagons to headline that one, which was, uh, was a massive coup, as you can imagine. Yeah. But it's just been one of those things where almost nobody that we've asked has said no, um, which is sensational. Why would they? You know, I mean, it's a brilliant idea. Gives them a chance to to at least get their music out because at the moment with with, with the virus and, and lockdown and everything, it's so difficult for bands to stay in the public eye. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, there was such, uh, after two, which was obviously a, a very big success, um, I was inundated by bands saying, can we do this as well? Um, and I didn't really necessarily want to do a two-day festival um, because, well, frankly, it's quite a lot of work. I bet. Um, <laughs> uh, but there was enough time to say, okay, well, anyone that, that wants to do this, the cut-off date is a month before, so we need videos now. Um, and it's, it's made it a lot easier because it's not just a case of getting people's videos and playing them. Um, it's a case of editing them as well because you've got fixed time slots and you can guarantee that bands do not send you the length of set that you want. Um, and secondarily, quite often, the audio quality isn't quite as good as it could be. So um, I've done quite a lot of uh, remastering work. My background is, is music production. Um, so I've done quite a lot of remastering work and quite a lot of videos to make sure that there, that there is a standard that goes out there, so it's high standard. And I think that's, that's been reflected um, in the comments we've got from people about how, quite, how high quality it is. Um, so there's still a bunch of work to be done on, on, uh, on three, um, and I already have eight bands who have asked to play on four, if there's going to be a four. So <laughs> it's rolling. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a success, though, because people, people are just going to go for it, and, and bands are certainly going to be up for it. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's great that um, you know, Chris Barris is going to be headlining the Sunday night this year. This year. It's like the yearly thing, right? It's, it's yeah. almost a bi month thing. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, Andy Copping. Um, you know, Chris Barris, I approached him and he immediately said yes. Um, and then 
know, based on the way that we're doing donations, um, he was he was actually blown away by the fact that he was getting paid for it. Uh, because a lot of these things that are going out at the moment, nobody's making any money out of at all either, which is which is problematic. Um, but the headline bands are actually making a decent fee from this as well. Um, you know, we we raised uh, nearly five thousand uh, pounds for WordPress two, which was amazing, um, considering it was bootstrapped again in about five weeks. Um, t-shirts, WordPress three t-shirt, right? T-shirts have gone great, great guns. Sold 250 t-shirts for the last one, which is unbelievable. Um, and we've, we've already sold 50 for the current one, so that's cool. Yeah, I can tell you're working your tail off on this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you set up the new wave of classic rock sort of movement and, and program, and you, didn't you really? So No, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the admins. I wasn't one of the, one of the original founders. Um, I joined the group probably about a year, like eight months or something into oh, when I went there. Um, it was just one of those things that uh, I'd been completely disillusioned with the, the old rock music movement. Um, I've, I've, I've been going to less and less gigs. You know, I've, I've still been going to Donington and, and those sorts of things, but hated the, the, the whole... As soon as tickets went to hundred pounds, right? It was like, oh come on, seriously? I'm not. I mean, as much as I love Metallica, I'm not paying hundred pounds to go see Metallica or anybody. Um, and it was at that point that I started then looking into, okay, well, where's where is new music, right? Where are the bands playing? <clears throat> and um, and I, I discovered the new wave classic rock uh, group that had been going for you know eight or nine months or whatever it was. I think there were probably six, seven hundred, six to seven hundred members at the time. Um, had a word with the chaps and um, became an admin probably three or four months later because it was one of those things that if you've got a passion you start writing about it um, and that was the outlet for me so I was writing reviews and I was buying the merch and getting pictures of the merch done uh, taken with, with band members and approaching people about new wave classic rock and those kind of bits and pieces so I was invited to become an administrator as well um, and it's just gone from there really so getting the YouTube channel up and running uh, which has been uh, uh, also a massive success. Uh, we have a thousand subscribers now on that YouTube channel, so it means that you know small bands can get their their new videos out to uh, a thousand member audience, even if they maybe only have fifty or hundred people on their own YouTube YouTube channel themselves. Um, so you know it's been it's been Webfest and the the video side for me, and other members concentrate on other sides of, the, of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it is it is going amazingly well, and and it goes to show. I mean, you hear you hear certain people saying, you know, rock's dead. Um, it, it's it's never it. died, how, how and it never will. You can get, right? How, how can rock be dead if if a UK rock band can get their album at number nine in the UK rock charts or the UK charts, not rock charts? You know, massive wagons. What a great job they've done. Oh, you God, know, they yeah. charted their first album since they got signed. And then number nine for their second album since they started signing. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, people people want to rock. They always will. Um, and you've created the Facebook page for Webfest and 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 the, yes. the kind of un, under underlying charity, haven't you? And um, under the under the banner, pay bands properly fundraiser. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about how people can can donate and help out. Right. So there's there's a there's a donation page which I put up. Um, I won't send send the link send the link out here. I'm sure you'll be able to post that up there. Yeah. Um, uh, which is using Facebook donations. That's using debit or credit cards. Um, for Webfest One, we use an external uh, partner called Kofi Co D, which is all about buying people a coffee. Right. So. Um, that's that says buy a coffee and a cake. So I think that I set the minimum donation on that for seven pounds. I think it was uh, something like that. But basically, that that's if you want to use PayPal. Um, and then obviously T-shirts. So we've got these lovely T-shirts with uh, the local World Fest yeah. in the front and the whole band line up in the back. Uh, we've got uh, men's and ladies sizes in those. Um, and for those uh, ten pounds of each, uh, for twenty pounds that anyone would pay for those T-shirts goes directly to the bands. Actually, this, this time it's being split between the bands and music venue trust. And, right, and that's so. kind of the, the whole point, which, which is the bands need to be paid, but also <clears throat> the venues need to be kept open for the bands to play in, right? So I think music venue trust have done a great job um, of, of getting that stuff. We had, a, we had a, several of the bands that played on Webfest 2 donated all of their proceeds to music venue trust as well. 
um, particularly bad touch. You know, they, they produced a sensational video for us, spent a lot of time and effort on it, and then basically said, don't pay us, give that money to the music vendor trust. So, you know, that's, that's great. But it's all about this, right? It's all about supporting the community. Um, it's all about supporting bands, and it's all about supporting the venues that the bands can play in, because we all want to get back to live music at some point. Um, and mm -hmm. if we don't take these steps right now, there won't be any. Right, so you know our 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 genre is not going to be playing, you know, playing the Royal Albert Hall with six hundred people in it. Right, yeah. our three thousand. They need to be playing at Leo's Red Lion in Grey's End. You know, they need to be playing at the Black Heart in, in in London. They need to be playing at the Red Room, Red Room in in, uh, in you know. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I it's mean, it's all about the yeah. Group. Yeah, we, 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 we were talking to uh, a local venue that's, that's close to us called Dirty Rockers and it's, it's one of them kind of grassroots places that, that new bands can play there. You know, and, it, and it's maybe to a few people at a time, but it, it, it gets them the experience. It gets them road savvy and people, people do spread the word around and, and that's how bands get, get big. Absolutely. And I, I think that the, the scene right now is better than uh, and much more healthy than it was 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago, there was nothing. And it was, it was kind of, it was Foo Fighters and Metallica. You know, that, that was what you got. You had to go to the O2, you know, in, in London to, to see bands. And now, you know, up, up until lockdown, I was going to two or three gigs a week um, in, in small venues, which is just, you know, there's nothing I'd rather do than go and see a small band in a small venue. Yeah, and they, <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a, you know there's there's an awful lot of us around. There's an awful lot of like-minded individuals. Um, mm -hmm. I knew nobody on this scene whatsoever. And you know one of the things I did, especially with regards to new and classic rock, um, is I put out a, a, a post saying I'm new to this group. Um, I, I like all the old stuff, but I want to do the new stuff. I don't know who the bands are. If there are any gigs coming up in the next two weeks, please let me know where they are. And let me know if you want to if you want to meet up for a beer, right? And I had three or four people just ping straight away saying this gig, this gig, this gig. We're meeting at this pub at this time. See you there, kind of thing. Um, and so it's gone from no no one in the scene over the course of probably no more than six months to having a steady bunch of people, um, especially in the London area because that's that's my patch, where every gig you go to, it's the same people and mm. a bunch of other people. Obviously, there's this sort of hardcore of maybe fifteen to twenty. Um, that you rock up at the, the World's End in Camden and the place is full of your mates, right? Which is, I mean, you know, I'm sure you did back in the day, you used to go to rock clubs, you know, when oh, we were yeah, in our places, yeah. right? You, you, you see the same people all the time and that was great. And, it's, and for me and for, for, you know, the other people that do this, it's back to that again. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like that round here. You know, you go to you go to the venue after venue and you yeah. see the same real, what I'll call genuine rock fans that... Mm -hmm that really want, want to hear good rock. You know, they want to hear good music. And and without the venues, um, that's going to be like cutting off the lifeblood and certainly cutting off several arms to most people I know. Um, on on the subject of, of COVID and, and lockdown, I mean, yeah. what sort of feedback have you had from, from bands and venues about the, the, you know, the financial impact of it all? Well, the financial impact is huge, clearly. Yeah. I mean, um, but these guys, if you're talking about the fact that there's no live music at all at the moment, it's, it's a massive issue because these guys have all got rent to pay. You know, their, their, their electricity bills still could be coming in. Mm. Their water bills still have to pay, right? So <clears throat> unless they built up a huge amount of savings, they're in the same issue, you know, in the same place that everybody else is. Maybe, they, maybe they're getting some government subsidies. I know there have been a few of those around, but not enough. Um, given that it's now... It's now July and coming on August. You know, the government announced a couple of weeks ago that they were setting up a fund for this, but um, I don't know that anyone's actually seen any money yet, right? And, and it's so it's four months without income. You know, no, it's very, these are companies, right? So this is what people do for a living. It's a company. Um, and it's very difficult for anyone to survive four months without getting paid, right? So, you know, going on from here, um, yes, things are opening up a little bit. Um, venues that have have the capacity or capability of doing some outdoor stuff, um, they're starting to be able to do some things. So, for example, Leo's Red Line in Gravesend, um, they've got they they've started doing things Fridays and Saturday nights. They have a 
they're, they're lucky that their pub is based in the middle of an industrial estate. So there's no one there, right? There's no houses around or anything. Um, and they've got a massive car park. <clears throat> so they set up an outdoor stage. Um, I think they've got uh, Collateral playing there, Jack Hutchinson's playing there, Scam's playing there over the course of three weekends. Um, I'm helping out Jack because I do, I do roadie stuff. I do guitar tech and sound as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to be there on uh, August the 8th um, with about 50, 60 people, right? Uh, and this is, this is a place that should be holding 300, right? Um, and then, you know, again, we were looking to try and do this at the face bar in Reading. Um, be before we knew that the indoor regulations were going to be too strict to be able to do it. So we, we, we did, a, did a whole uh, plan around capacity planning and around safety, um, how many people we could get in, what the social distancing regulations were going to need to be within the venue, all those kind of bits and pieces. And we set up the gig and we, we actually ended up live streaming it without an audience because it wasn't yeah. possible to have an audience in. But even so, that was a success. And a lot of people, you know, there, there were 110 people who paid a tenner each to watch the live stream, right? Yeah. Uh, professionally recorded and, 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 uh, and videoed um, live event. So, you know, it's kind of, I, I hate the new normal as, as a concept mm. because we want to get rid of it. But, um, you know, I think it's, we have to get as close to live as possible right now for people. Uh, but I always say that a live is the new live at the moment, right? So, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm, I'm over 50. Uh, I've got pre-existing health conditions. I definitely don't want to die. So, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. staying alive is the new life. Yeah. Well, if you could uh, send a message out to, to, to Boris and, and the government regarding yeah. all this, uh, and, and you could say whatever you like, because we don't censor and we don't give a fuck. So if you, if you, whatever you want to say, say it. Um, what, 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 would you, what do you want Boris to do? I mean, to get this situation sorted for musicians and venues. Well, I think the thing is that, that people, and I'm not making a statement right now, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just telling you my opinion, <clears throat> which may not be quite a good TV. Uh, but um, the issue is, is that nobody knows what can happen from this point onwards, right? It's never happened before. So, yes, we would all love venues to open. We would all love to get music, you know, music going again. We would all love to see live, live, record, live, live material again. But... It has to be safe, right? We can't have people dying as a result of going out to gigs. I don't think that's acceptable. And if you, if you, you know, this is an aerosol-based as well as contact-based um, virus, right? Yeah. So if you have a bunch of people, let's just say you have, you have, a, you have a, a bunch of musicians on stage, you have three of them singing, you know, that, that projects four, five, six meters. Mm -hmm. So you only need to have a bunch of punters up the front and, and singers singing at them who are ill and you're going to have a, a massive spike and people are going to die because unfortunately, um, as it is right now, the sort of people who are going to gigs and those sorts of gigs are us, right? They're, they're generally speaking not kids, right? They're not 15, 16 year olds. They're, they're 40 plus, 40, 50, 60s and we are vulnerable. As much as we'd like to think that we're all fit and healthy, we are the vulnerable people that are most likely to die as a result of getting COVID. Yeah. So yeah. you have to keep it safe. Right. And, and you can only tell where that's those safe points are after you test, you test something, you see if it had a, a, an effect, you test something else, you see if it had an effect, it's going to be slow. Right. If we get a vaccine out, hopefully that's the panacea, you know, hopefully that's the silver bullet that, 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 that we can then look into and say, right, we're all those vulnerable people. We're going to get vaccinated first, or awesome, off we can go. You know, maybe then you have uh, you have something on your app, or you know, you have basically a vaccine passport that says I've been vaccinated, I'm good to go. And the more people that get vaccinated, once that happens, you will you will get to that point of herd immunity, and then people then things can open back up again. Um, but I, I can't see it uh, until that happens. I can't see until we have a vaccine. I can't see it opening up in any substantial way because you have to have that social distancing and you have to be able to enforce it. So you have to have the staff, you have to have the stewards and people have to be sensible. And once people have had a beer, they're not. And you only need to see, you know, what happened outside Liverpool football ground or what happened outside Leeds football ground or what happens at the, at the, beach, of, at the beach of Bournemouth to see that people are not sensible, no. especially after they've had a beer. Yeah. Right. And then, so 
going back to your point, the, the issue is, is the government have no clue um, and they appear clueless. And the reason they appear clueless is because they, they will not make a decision and stick to it. And if they'd made a decision and stuck to it up front um, and said, right, everyone has to wear masks, right? Everyone's locked down. And then that's the best way it's going to be to try and get to the point where we can all go out again. And now you can go to here and now you can go to here. If they'd taken that stance, then perhaps we would have been further along now. Um, and that's down to economic reasons. Mm. Um, and frankly, that's down to uh, government cronies um, and people with their hand in the pot. In, in the pot right? So um, the good old boys whose, whose specific businesses would, would be effective, affected by the economies, uh, the economies of COVID um, and them being protected when, when the small guys are not. Yeah. A similar sort of thing, really, with, with Brexit, isn't it? You know, they're just not considering how bans are going to be able to tour in Europe and how European bans are going to be able to come here without what seems to be an endless stream of paperwork and expenditure. Right, but that's it's not even on their uh, it's not even on their uh, in the, on the list, right? They don't care, mm. right? Well, I mean, there are so many other things that that uh, they care about more than. Uh, local arts, right? Um, and the, the problem with that is that, that arts is a huge industry, right? I mean, I, I haven't got the figures to hand, but it's something like, it's either 3 billion or 30 billion pounds, right? I'm sure you've got the figures, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a huge amount of money that gets generated for the economy. Um, so it's kind of one of those things of if, if you spend half a million or if you spend 500 million propping up something that could be worth 3 billion, that's a worthwhile investment, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's, it's, so, it's so far down the line of the things that, that they feel are important. You know, it's more important to open up Greg's um, than it is to, to open up uh, the, you know, Leah's Red Lion. Yeah. It's more important to open up the Royal Albert Hall than it is to open up the face bar. <laughs> anyway, uh, because they're not, these are not grassroots people. Now, if it was opera, we might be might be more popular with them. Like opera, or ballet, or you know, jazz, maybe. Mm. <laughs> well, um, it's been fascinating talking to you, Richard, and and thank you so much for giving your time and and good luck with Webfest three, four, five, six. Who knows? Absolutely, maybe. yeah. Well, um, I think the thing about that is we just need to see how it goes. More and more yeah. people are doing kind of what we're doing uh, in a very professional way. Um, and you know the market may become oversaturated, and I, and I guess the sort of amounts that we can raise this time round, and, and if we do a four, the sort of the sort of amounts we can raise for four will tell us whether uh, whether you know we're still doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, personally, I would rather be going out and seeing a live gig every day of the week than doing this. Yeah. But while we can't, it's a worthwhile thing to do. Absolutely, and we encourage everybody to. To tune in, watch the videos, donate, put your hands in your pockets, and, absolutely, uh, and, and support yeah. these bands. The key thing about this is, uh, you know, is that we don't make anything out of it. So New England mm -hmm. Classic Rock don't make anything out of it. As an admin team, we don't make any out, anything out of it. We put all of our time and effort into this from, from a purely altruistic perspective, which is we want to support the music, we want to support new bands, we want to support venues. Um, and so they're getting paid directly out of donations and it's critically important that people donate. So we had 800 people watching last time. You know, I hope it's going to be even more this time. Um, you can work out the math, right? Of, of we, we've got 5,000 donations from 800 people. Um, uh, but having said that, you know, part of the biggest donations were t-shirts. Um, mm -hmm. and because of the, uh, because of the manufacturer that we were using at that particular time, only six pounds of each of the 20 pounds of the t-shirt went to the bands because the rest of it was cost. This time around it's 10 pounds, so the economics are much better. Right. But unless people donate uh, using credit cards or debit cards or via PayPal or buying a t-shirt, the bands don't get paid. And if the bands don't get paid, uh, it's pointless. Yeah. Totally. Right, so if you're coming and if you're gonna watch, please, please, five pound, 10 pound, don't matter what it is, uh, please just make a donation. Matt, you heard it from Richard himself. Yes. Pay your money and get rocked. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, I want to do my, I want to do my Bob impression. You know, he yeah. never said that. <laughs> go on, go on, say. Give us your fucking money. <laughs> 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 I 
Thanks a lot, Richard. It, it, it's been great. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.